Okay, this is a quick video um, having a look at BritBox and just explaining the options if you want to watch uh, BritBox abroad. Now, BritBox is the new joint venture from the BBC and ITV, and um, I've just had a look at it today, really, and it's it, it looks pretty good. I think it probably appeals to a certain age group. Um, if you're looking for shows from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, beginning of the century, it's absolutely packed full of stuff. And if you enjoy things like period dramas, crime, if you're looking for things like Downton Abbey, um, it, there really is a lot of content on it. I can just show you here. Uh, also, I know a lot of people are looking for Doctor Who. There's, I'm not sure if they're all here, but there seem to be loads and loads of series of Doctor Who. 600 Doctor Who episodes. I'm not sure if that's all of them, but uh, must be a lot of them. And a classic film section where they supposedly remastered um, popular films. Again, they're older films. You're not going to get your latest blockbusters here, but there's some very decent films here. Um, there is a lot of content here. Um, now, first of all, I should explain. It's a bit confusing, the restrictions. I'm watching here the BritBox UK version. Okay, so I've signed up and... Um, registered for Redbox UK and very good it looks too. Uh, my wife wanted it for Downton Abbey and I'm pretty sure there's yeah six series in HD of Downton Abbey so um, that's a lot of Downton Abbey gulp um, and, and it has got arguably the best shows from BBC and um, ITV on there from over the years. It hasn't got all of them. Sometimes you'll miss a classic because of due to licensing issues. And when, for instance, you'll find a lot of shows, uh, BBC and ITV shows on um, Netflix, I believe, and Amazon Prime. Um, I believe once, once those licenses run out, they'll be back on BritBox. So it's great. But this is the UK version. You can also get it in Canada and the US. Again, you um, have to be in those countries to access it. And they're all distinct. My UK version, BritBox, won't work in um, US, apparently. So, basically, if you're outside the US, the UK, or Canada, and I believe New Zealand is coming soon, um, you won't be able to access BritBox. So, can you access it with the v VPN? Okay, well, let me just close that. So here's a VPN I use. This is called um, uh, NordVPN. It's one of the more popular VPNs. I've been using it for a few years, and I use it particularly for BBC and iPlayer when traveling. Um, will it work with BritBox? Yes. So let me just explain a scenario. If I went to France or Germany or anywhere in Europe, or even the um, US, I could connect back to a UK VPN and watch BritBox without a problem. I would even in the um, the US, I'd need that UK VPN because my BritBox UK version is not transferable to the US. But I could watch it anywhere in the world. But the key point here is that you have to have. A valid credit card in the country that you're connecting to so so if I was in um, so I, if I lived in France and I had French banks or anything like that banking cards the VPN would allow me to connect to a version of BritBox but it wouldn't allow me to subscribe in the first place okay so if you're using somebody else's account you could use the VPN to get past the geolocation bit but your French credit card wouldn't work to subscribe or even to get the 30 day free trial. So it's worth bearing that in mind. What you can do, of course, is if you do use um, a VPN, you can access the normal BBC and um, the BBC iPlayer site and, of course, ITV Hub. Now, this advantage is really, I mean, it's difficult to say, but First of all, BBC and ITV, you can stream live. So if you're looking for up-to-date stuff and everything like that, it, you, you need the main channels. Those will work with the 
uh, VPN. So it might be worth investing in a VPN for that. I think it's very much worth it. If you go to somewhere like BBC iPlay, you'll find there's still loads and loads of dramas on here. Um, but you might be missing some of the bigger ones. I mean, let's just have a look at the categories. So dramas and soaps. This is in BBC iPlay. You can see there's loads. They tend to be the later ones, I think. And what they've done is they've archived some of the older stuff from over the years in um, in um, BritBox. But there's still, well, pages and pages of um, dramas, which are ge generally refreshed. And, of course, you've got all the live channels. There's uh, 1, 2, 3, 11, I think, live channels. So if you want the news and stuff like that. Similarly, ITV you'll get loads of dramas and some very good. So we've got Agatha Christus, Marple, Poirot, Cold Feet, Coronation Street, Durell's. But I've noticed the one that is most popular perhaps is Downton Abbey. That's been taken off the ITV hub at the moment and it's on BritBox. So I don't know if it's worth. So if you're abroad and you don't have a UK credit card or a US or Canadian credit card, I would say a VPN gives you a good selection for pretty much free apart from the cost of the vpn which is usually only two or three bucks a, um, a month you can watch a lot of uh, uk drama on both bbc and i play through the free apps uh, you if you've got a, uh, a credit card that works in the uk or us you can subscribe to um, britbox but you'll need the vpn to and the subscription to vitbox to watch it from Europe or outside the UK and US. So, sorry, that might be a bit complicated, but I, I hope I've explained it. Britbox looks pretty wonderful if you're of a certain generation, I think I'd probably best say. Maybe it's not really something for the youngsters, but uh, if you want to watch The Midsummer Murders, followed by Downton Abbey and Miss Marple, Jonathan Creek, uh, it is absolutely packed. And for people like me who love Doctor Who, and I believe one of my favourite sci fi programs is on here Blake 7 although I could be wrong no it's not on <laughs> um, but there, there is plenty of stuff on there anyway so uh, okay so that's um, Britbox Abroad uh, my quick review thanks for watching bye bye